This problem is remembered as one of the hardest mathematical problems of all time, and it comes from the International Mathematical Olympiad. In 1988, the IMO was held in Australia, and the very last question on the exam became legendary. Question number six. Essentially, they gave it to a panel of judges who look at the IMO before it's released, and they look at the problems and they assess how good they are. And even that panel couldn't solve this problem. That's how hard it was. It was so difficult that only 11 students actually managed to solve it. And even Terence Tao, who was sitting the Mathematical Olympiad at that time, only scored one out of the possible seven marks. And today we're going to look at a really beautiful solution of this problem. So let's dive straight in. So this is the problem here. It says, let a and b be positive integers such that ab plus one divides a squared plus b squared. And we need to show that this here, which is a squared plus b squared, all divided by ab plus one is the square of an integer. Okay, so where do we even begin with this? Well, we're told that ab plus one divided by a squared plus b squared, this divide, they divide each other. So we can rewrite that and say, well, then a squared plus b squared divided by ab plus one, this must equal r for some r in the positive integers. And I'm just going to move this down and say, well, we're going to rewrite this. So just right here, rewrite as this. And then what we want to do is we want to show that R, well, that's a perfect square. Or, you know, we can put the same as square of, the in, of an integer. Okay. So I'll put a line there because that's what we're kind of rewriting the problem as. And this will help us a lot more in answering the problem. So I guess the first thing with any problem is plugging in some numbers. So let's just see what numbers we get out when we do this. So let's say I'm going to do this in blue. So, okay, well, let's take A equals 1 and I'll take B equals 4. So we'd get 1 squared plus 4 squared over 1 times 4 is 4 plus 1. That would give you 17 over 5. Can we reduce this any further? Unfortunately, we can't. So, no. For this example, that's not a perfect square. I'll just abbreviate PS to perfect square here. <laughs> okay, well, let's maybe try one that I definitely didn't know before actually worked, but we'll try A equals 2 and B equals 8. Okay, well, we have 2 squared plus 8 squared, all divided by 2 times 8, 16, plus 1. Not plus 1? Yes, plus 1. Okay, well, this is none other than 68 divided by 17. And surprisingly, it looks like it wouldn't go into it, but 17 does divide 68 by 4. So this gives us 4, which is 2 squared. And so, yes, this is a perfect square. Now, you might notice straight away that regardless of whether we choose what we choose for A and B, we can essentially swap them around and they themselves will give the same answer. So if, if I said, okay, well, I want A is 8 and B is 2, you're still getting 8 squared plus 2 squared, which is the same as 2 squared plus 8 squared, all divided by 2 times 8, or 8 times 2, I, I guess I should say, which is 16 plus 1, and we get the exact same answer out. We get, yeah, of course, this is 2 squared, and so this is... A perfect square. And so this is something that is quite important to note with this problem is regardless of the A's and B's and which way around you do them, you get the same output. So what we're trying to show is that for this case where we have A squared plus B squared divided by A, B plus 1, this expression here, when that does divide each other, then R is always going to be square. So we're always going to have something like this, like 2 squared, 3 squared, 5 squared, and so on. So, as with many problems, 
it's quite nice if you do a proof by contradiction, which is basically saying, well, actually, how about if I assume that R isn't a perfect square and we're going to hopefully find something that contradicts this and then we can therefore say, well, proof by contradiction, therefore R has to be a perfect square. So let's set that up. Let's call it our proof. So proof, let's say assume by contradiction that R is, well, it's not, so is not a perfect square. Looking at this, we see obviously we have an A and a B that, that forms a solution to this. And because A and B, well, they belong to positive integers, we know that there's obviously going to be some, some smallest version of A and B. And that is going to be a solution to this problem. So what we can say is we can say let A1 and B1 be the smallest solution to our problem, which was star. We denoted it star here. So let A and B be the smallest solution for this. And what we can say, we can say without loss of generality, we're going to assume that one of these A or Bs, well, they're either going to be greater than or equal to the other. So without loss of generality, what we're going to say is we'll say A1 is going to be greater than or equal to B1. So with this, well, why don't we start plugging in different values? We have an A1 and a B1. So of course, the solution or the, the, the equation in this case, it's going to look like this. We're going to have, we'll just plug in A1 and B1 into here. So we would have A1 squared plus B1 squared all divided by a1, b1 plus 1. And of course, this equals r, which is what we had before. Now we can expand this out. So we have a1 squared plus b1 squared is r, a1, b1 plus r. And making things a little bit nicer, we have a1 squared minus r. And we're going to have a1, b1 plus b1 squared minus r equals zero. Now, you might look at this, and what can you notice? Well, this is a quadratic. This means that a1 is a solution to this form. We would have x squared minus r b1x plus b1 squared minus r equals zero. So a1 is a solution to this equation here. But then we have a quadratic, so is a1 the only solution to this? No, it's not. We have more than one. So let's say a2 is also a solution to this. So we will say let a2 be, I'm going to call that equation dagger, and I'll just put IE, we have A2 squared minus R, A2, B1 plus B1 squared minus R equals zero. Okay, so A1, A2 are solutions to this dagger, this equation that we have here, which is fantastic. And um, what can we do if we know that they're solutions? Well, we know that we can write x minus a1 multiplied by x minus a2 must equal zero because they're solutions. And so if we expand this out, what we can find is x squared minus a1 plus a2 of x plus a1 a2 equals zero. So we have this equation here and we have this equation here and what can we do we can equate them equate the coefficients to calculate what a1 and a2 are in terms of r and b1 so let's do that we'll say equating with dagger well we find that a1 
plus A2, what's that equal to? That's going to be RB1. So that's RB1. And then A1, A2, what's that going to be equal to? It's going to be equal to B squared minus R. So B1 squared, sorry, should I say? Minus R. Now I'll just rewrite these in terms of A2 for each of them. So we have that A2 is R, B1 minus A1 and A2 is B1 squared minus R, all divided by A1. And these will come in handy in just a moment. So we know that A2 is a solution to this equation here. And what we can do now is we can assume or deduce some things about A1. So we know, well, we have that A1, B1 and R, they all belong to positive integers. So from this here, we can say, well, A2 must itself also be part or belong to the integers because we have an integer times an integer minus an integer is always going to be an integer. So we can say, well, that means that A2 must belong to the integers, but we need A2 to belong to the positive integers. So we need it to be like this. Now, what in order to do that, we need to check that it's not negative and that it doesn't equal zero. We said, R is not a perfect square. So that must mean that B1 squared minus R, well, that cannot ever equal zero because we, we, we said that we're assuming as part of the contradiction that R is not a perfect square. And so can't equal zero. But now the question is, well, can A1, A2 be less than zero? Can it, can it ever be negative? So can it, can A2 be less than zero? Well, let's investigate this. So we have a2 squared plus b1 squared divided by a2 b1 plus 1 equals r. Okay. Now, all we've done here is we've just substituted in a2 into the expression that we had at the top of here, into this expression. And we can look at this and quite simply say, well, no, a2 cannot be negative because we know that r belongs to the positive integers. And the only case here would be that because B also belongs to the positive integers, A2 must be greater than zero. So we can say thus, A2 has got to be greater than zero, which implies that A2 belongs to the positive integers, which is fantastic. Now, what we can do is we can go back to our statement that we made, which was that A1 has got to be greater than B1. We can do something with this. So A1, we said, was greater than B1, which implies if we square both sides, we know that that would be A1 squared must be greater than B1 squared. We just square both sides. What we can also say is, I'm going to say and B1 squared, well, that's going to be greater than b1 squared minus r, just by simple uh, laws. That must mean that a1 squared, well, that's got to be, because we've said it's greater than b1 squared, that must be greater than b1 squared minus r. So from this, we can say a1 squared, well, that's got to be greater than b1 squared minus r and then we can rearrange this by saying okay well a1 must therefore be greater than b1 squared minus r all over a1 but if you recognize this here well that's actually the same as a2 so we can say this equals a2 we've just said from this We've just concluded that A1 has got to be greater than A2. But we said at the beginning that A1 was the smallest solution to star. So how have we got a smaller solution? This in itself is a contradiction. Which is a really nice contradiction, really beautiful contradiction. I'm just going to write that down. I'm going to say, but we said that A1 was the smallest. So I'll write here, this 
contradicts our statement that A1, B1 were the smallest solution. Okay, let me say thus, our assumption that R is not a perfect square Well, it's wrong. So, from this, thus, said thus about ten times, we can conclude that R must be a perfect square. So that is the solution to the problem. And I just thought it was a, a really, really beautiful solution. Really tricky, tricky question, but a really elegant solution. If you like the video, then please like, subscribe and comment. And I'll see you all in the next one.